Yeah. Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat yeah. and Quaker puffed rice, yeah. the breakfast cereal shot from guns, yeah. Yeah. present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! Upon you, Huskies! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. You'll find out in just a few minutes, and it's terrific. Delicious Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are making a special offer to you listeners. Keep listening. Hear all about it later on. Throughout most of the night, Philip and Ada Carver had kept an anxious vigil at the bedside of their little son, Gary. Now, with dawn only a few hours away, the sick boy's condition seemed worse than ever. <coughs> his face was flushed with fever, and his small frame was racked by fits of coughing. Oh, poor darling. If only there was something Mother could do to stop that cough. How are you feeling, son? Not so bad. It's a Except that my head hurts. I tell you what, when morning comes, I'll go into town and buy you some kind of a present, huh? Anything you can think of. How about it? Would you like that? I, I guess so. And what'll it be? A toy? Something special to eat? Or maybe some ice skates to use when you get well again, huh? I don't know. Can't you think of anything you'd like? Uh-uh. I got an idea. Maybe if I put out the lamp, you could go to sleep for a while and... And dream of something you'd like. Do you suppose you could do that? I'll try. All right, dear. You try. And Daddy and I will go in the other room. Ada Carver blew out the lamp. Then she and her husband went out to the bedroom. When they were out of earshot of the little boy, Phil Carver said, Well, Ada, what do you think? Phil. Phil, I'm frightened. I think it's diphtheria. What? Diphtheria? Yes. Just the other day I was over at the general store. I heard... I heard there was an epidemic of it. Oh, I'd better not wait till morning. I'll go into town and get the doctor right now. Dr. McComb was the only physician in the town of Forty Mile. Not long after Phil Carver set out for town on snowshoes, a man knocked on the door of Dr. McComb's cabin. Hey, hold your horses a minute till I get this lantern lit. Howdy, stranger. You're a doctor, ain't you? That's right. A friend of mine is plenty sick. Can you come and take a look at him? What's wrong? Another case of diphtheria? Yeah. Yeah, I guess maybe that's it. Where is he? I left him at a roadhouse about five miles south of here. I'll take you there on the sled. All right. Come on inside and wait a minute. I'll be with you as soon as I can get some clothes on. The stranger headed south. But about half a mile beyond the edge of town, he veered suddenly to the right. Gee, now that's... Gee, boy. What's the idea of leaving the trail? I'm taking you to my friend, like I said. You told me he was at a roadhouse five miles south of town. Uh, guess I misspoke myself. Now, listen, mister. I've got no time for practical jokes. Hey, put, Doc. Does this gun look like a practical joke? Hey, what is this, a kidnapping? Call it anything you like. Just don't make any trouble and you won't get hurt. Mush! Mush! Dawn was breaking as the stranger halted his team in front of a crude, weather-beaten shack located in a thickly wooded canyon. Well, 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 well. Uh, so this is where your friend is staying. That's right. Get moving, Doc. All right. Go ahead, Doc. You first. 
As Dr. McComb entered the shack, he saw a heavy-set, coarse-featured man lying on a bunk in one corner of the room. Howdy. Yes, you must be the local sawbones, huh? I'm a doctor, if that's what you mean. Are you the patient? I'm not lying here flat on my back just because I'm tired. He told me you had diphtheria. <laughs> Lead poisoning is more like it. Wait till I get this shirt off. Take off your parka, Doc. All right. And go over and fix him up. Lebo bandaged me up, but he ain't much of a hand to dress the wounds. Guess maybe you better take off the bandage. Mm, bullet's still in there? Yeah. When did it happen? Three days ago. Hmm. Pretty bad, huh? I've seen worse. You there, mister. Yeah? Put some water on the boil. All right. What about me? Better get yourself a bullet and start biting on it. This is going to hurt. With cool, unhurried efficiency, the doctor went to work. Beads of sweat started out on the wounded man's forehead. But aside from an occasional gasp of pain, he said nothing. Finally, the ordeal was over. As Dr. McComb finished bandaging the wound, the man said, How about it, Doc? Will it heal up pretty quick? It will, providing you stay off the trail for the next few days. Stay off the trail, but I've got to go There's no use arguing with me. I'm just telling you the facts. If you move around too much, you'll start a hemorrhage. You can ride one of the sleds, Klondike. That'll slow us up. Well, settle it between yourselves. Personally, I've got to get back to my cabin. Sorry, Doc. I'm afraid you're not going anywhere for a while. Well, see here, I'm getting downright fed up with these high-handed tactics. I've got patients to attend to. To court you, Doc. It's no use arguing. You see, there's a little matter of the law being after us. How long do you intend to hold me prisoner here? That all depends. On what? And how soon a pal of ours shows up? No sign of him yet, huh, Klondike? Uh, no, but I ain't worried. He was heading east when we split up. It's bound to take him a couple of days to circle around and catch up with us. How much longer do you think it's safe for us to wait? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe another 24 hours, maybe a little longer. We can't wait much longer. Once people find out the doc's missing, they're liable to get out a search party for him. Yeah, yeah thought of that. If there's an epidemic going around, like he says, they may start hunting for him mighty soon. Maybe you better go back to town and keep an eye on things. The Mounties don't have posters out on you, so nobody will recognize you. All right. There's a cafe right close to the doc's cabin. I can pick me out a table by the window and watch everything that goes on. Good idea. Well, what about the doc here? Think you can keep him under control? Well, listen, just because I'm draped out on this bunk doesn't mean I can't handle a six-shooter. You get going and leave the doc to me. Sergeant Preston had just arrived at the police post at 40 Mile. The great dog, King, lay quietly at his master's feet, as Constable Ross said. So you think Klondike Taylor is hiding out somewhere around 40 Mile, eh, Sergeant? He must be, Alex, unless he escaped over the border. I'm pretty sure he didn't do that. Ah, uh, so? When he and his gang pulled that job at Nugget City, Klondike stopped lead. In fact, he was barely able to make his getaway. I think he's going to have to hold up for a while and have that wound attended to before he goes much farther. Well, some of the gang got captured, didn't they? Three of them. But Klondike and two others got away. Apparently, they split up soon after. Oh. Well, just a minute, Sergeant. I'll see you at the door. All right. Howdy. Howdy, Constable. My name's Phil Carter. I heard that Sergeant Preston and King are in town. That's right. Come on in. Thank you. Hello, Phil. What? Oh, Sergeant, you're just the person I'm looking for. Something wrong? Yes, Gary's pretty sick. Ada thinks he has diphtheria. I'm sorry to hear that. Phil. To make matters worse, I can't locate Dr. McComb. He's not at his cabin. No. I got into town before daylight and found his cabin empty. Been waiting around ever since, but he hasn't shown up. He's probably out on a case. Nobody seems to have seen him either. I was wondering if King couldn't track him down. Good idea. Just a second while I get my parking. All right, King, come on, boy. We'll go to Dr. McComb's cabin so you can pick up the scent. A few minutes after leaving the mounted police post, the sergeant and Phil arrived at Dr. McComb's cabin. We may as well go in. Just how will King get the scent, Sergeant? Just by sniffing around the cabin? I'll give him a piece of the doctor's clothing to smell. This sweater hanging on the wall here will do. Here, King. This is the person I want you to find, boy. Got the scent? All right, Phil, let's go. When the sergeant and Phil left Dr. McComb's cabin, with King eagerly following the doctor's scent, 
They didn't know that the outlaw Lebo was watching them from the window of the cafe nearby. Lebo waited until they were out of sight. Then he left the cafe and raced his team back to the hideout. Oh, 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 oh. What's up, Lebo? Plenty. A Mountie's coming after the doctor. A Mountie? Yeah, a Mountie and another guy. I saw him going to the doc's cabin. They had a dog with them. From the way they're acting, it looks like they're using the dog to follow the doc's scent. Did you see which way they were heading? Yeah, they were heading south out of town. Same way I went when I brought the doc here. I didn't bother following them. I just came straight back here to the canyon. That means we got 10 or 15 minutes yet before they get here. What are we going to do? First, we'll tie the doc up and gag him so he can't shout out and warn them. Then you go out and hide in that clump of trees out in front of the cabin. When they knock on the door, I'll open up with a gun in my hand. That way, we'll have them covered from two directions. What if the Mountie puts up a fight? In that case, let him have it. Right in the back. We'll continue our story in just a moment. goes the curtain on the greatest offer ever made by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. Oh, boy, look. Yes, look what I have. Five. Yes, I said five. One, two, three, four, five. Bugs Bunny comic books. Gee, I've never seen these before. That's right, they're all new. They're just off the presses. Only Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice have these swell, handy, pocket-sized Bugs Bunny comic books. And are all the stories different? Yes, you get five complete stories. Each are 32 full-color pages. Just think, 160 pages jam-packed with adventures, laughs, fun, and excitement. Five Bugs Bunny comic books you've never seen or read before. And believe it or not, they're all yours for only 15 cents and one box top from Quaker Puff Wheat or Rice. Look, here's one called Bugs Bunny's Secret Agent. It looks mysterious, all right. It sure does. Just picture this story. It's a thriller diller. Bugs turns detective, and with his pal Sylvester, he unearths a skeleton in a trunk. Then he gets into some mysterious goings-on in a sinister house. Is Bugs scared? Who gets trapped? Read all about it in Bugs Bunny's Secret Agent. And boy, this one's a riot. Bugs Bunny joins the Marines. Bugs almost causes a riot. He wants to be a general, but bragging, insulting sergeants and majors only gets him promotions from KP duty to mopping floors in the guardhouse. Don't miss reading this story. I want to hurry up and read them all. Just listen to the fun and excitement in store for you. Bugs Bunny captured by cannibals. Bugs Bunny and buried treasure. Bugs Bunny Lost in the Frozen North. Yes, and plenty more, too. Golly, how can I get mine quick? It's easy, fellas and girls. The best part of it is we'll not only send you five of these wonderful new Bugs Bunny comic books, we'll also let you know how you can get ten more. They're all new, all different. You've never seen them before. And they've got just the right size to fit in your pocket. Gee, I can't wait to get mine. Well, here's all you do. You go to your grocer. Buy Quaker Puffed Wheat or Quaker Puffed Rice. They're my favorite breakfast cereals, because they're shot from guns. Cut off the top of the package of Quaker Puffed Wheat or Quaker Puffed Rice and send it along with 15 cents, only 15 cents, and your name and address. Send to Bugs Bunny, Chicago 77, Illinois. Order now, first come, first served. Remember, for five Bugs Bunny comic books, all new, all different... Send only 15 cents, your name and address, and one box top from Quaker Puffed Wheat or Quaker Puffed Rice. Mail to Bugs Bunny, Chicago 77, Illinois. That's Bugs Bunny, Chicago 77, Illinois. Now to continue our story. Sergeant Preston and Phil Carver were trailing Dr. McComb. They didn't know that two outlaws were waiting to ambush them at the shack where the doctor was being held prisoner. The doctor's trail led to the mouth of the canyon where the outlaw's hideout was located. Sergeant Preston halted the team. Okay. What's wrong, Sergeant? Phil, I have a hunch we're headed for trouble. What do you mean? 
There's an old shack in this canyon, but it's been empty for the last two years. If anyone's living there now, they must have moved in recently. Maybe some trapper's using it. The reason I came to 40 Mile is that outlaws are hiding somewhere in the neighborhood. Outlaws? Holy smoke. One of them is wounded and probably needs medical attention. So that's why they brought Dr. McComb here. Could be. That would also explain why they took such a roundabout way to get here. Yeah, to fool anyone who might have seen them leave town. That's right. Now look, Phil. The shack's just about in the center of the canyon. Suppose you take King for protection and skirt around far enough so you can approach the shack from the opposite direction. Well, what about you, Sergeant? I'll drive the team up in front of the shack as though I don't suspect anything. That's dangerous. If they're outlaws, they may plug you on sight. I don't think they'll shoot until they find out what I'm up to. Anyway, I'll be counting on you and King to back me up. Here, you better take my carbine. Uh, Sergeant, you sure you want to work it this way? Yes, I'm sure. You and King go ahead. I'll wait here for a while to give you time to get into position. Ten minutes later, the sergeant arrived at the shack. The sergeant went up to the shack and knocked on the door. Suddenly, from a nearby clump of trees, a voice barked out a sharp command. Put up your hands, Bounty, and don't turn around. Then the door opened, and the sergeant saw himself facing the muzzle of a cocked six-shooter. Klondike Taylor. <laughs> My old friend, Sergeant Preston. Ask him what happened to the other guy and the dog. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. What did happen to that guy that was with you? And what happened to the dog? I guess that must be King that Lebo saw. Lebo didn't hear King slinking up behind him. Suddenly, the great dog sprang. The sergeant grabbed Klondike's gun hand and lashed out with a right to the jaw. Klondike crumpled quickly under the Mountie's sudden attack. Meanwhile, Lebo had dropped his gun and was trying to fend off the snarling dog that had sprung on him from out of nowhere. Phil approached through the underbrush. I've got him covered, Sergeant. Better pick up his gun, Phil. All right, King, let him up, boy. As for you, Klondike... If you're feeling half as sick as you look, you'll stay good and quiet for a while. A few minutes later, Lebo had been marched back into the shack and tied up. Klondike, with his wrists handcuffed together, was allowed to lie in the bunk because of his wound. The sergeant untied Dr. McComb. Thanks, sergeant. I never expected you'd have to trail me, King, but I'm mighty thankful you did. How did you happen to come after me, sergeant? Bill Carver was anxious to locate you. He wants you to come and attend to his little boy. Yes, we're... We're afraid he may have diphtheria. Diphtheria? I'd better get a look at him as soon as possible. Your cabin's over on Drifter Creek, isn't it, Phil? That's right. It's located right at the mouth of the creek. Maybe we can drive there with the outlaws, too. Take my outfit, Phil. King can go along and pace the team for you. He'll get you there in a couple of hours. That'll be swell, Sergeant. But what are you going to do with Klondike and his pal? I'll stay here and guard them for the time being. And you take the doctor back to town, stop off at the post, and tell Constable Ross to come out here and help me, please. All right, I'll do that. Oh, Phil. Yes? Good luck to your little boy. Thanks, Sergeant. He may need it. Two hours later, Phil and the doctor arrived at Phil's cabin on Drifter Creek. Oh! Oh, oh! Come on, doctor. All right. Thank heaven you're here. Hello, Mrs. Carver. Oh, Phil, darling, I was so worried. We had some trouble, honey. I'll explain later. Oh, here, doctor. Let me take your parka. Uh, thanks. Now, where's the little boy? He's in the next room here. Right this way, doctor. Hello there, son. Hello, daddy. I brought Dr. McComb to make you well again. Hello there, young man. I understand you went and caught yourself cold. Yes, sir. Well, now... Suppose we see what the trouble is. Now, can you stick out your tongue for me and say, ah? Ah. That's a good boy. Meanwhile, at the outlaw's shack, Sergeant Preston was speaking to Klondike Taylor. His back was turned to the door, and he didn't notice the look that crossed Lebo's face as the outlaw glanced at the front window. What happened to the rest of your gang, Klondike? There were three of you who got away. We split up a few miles north of Nugget City. I know that. Your tracks were still visible at the point where you separated. Well, where was the other man heading? Put up your hands, Marty. <laughs> I guess that answers your question, eh, Sergeant? Yes, I guess it does. Keep those hands up high, Redcoat. Don't try any monkey business while I'm taking your gun. Ah, you that's sure better. showed up at the right time, Slug. How about getting these handcuffs off me? He's got the key in his pocket. I'll find it. 
No funny stuff, Monty. Yeah, here it is. I'll go over there and stand against the wall. Hurry up with those cuffs, huh? All right. Yeah, thanks. Here, take this gun and keep the Monty covered while I untie Lebo. Uh, uh, what do you think we better do, Klondike? You and Slug better hightail it after the doctor and that other guy. You gotta stop them before they get to town and tell the Monty's what happened out here. Yeah, we'll stop them, all right. Uh, there you are. Uh, how about taking care of this Monty right now? Hold it, Slug. I'll keep pressing here, covered with a gun till you two get back. Then you can take care of them. Why wait? Because we ain't sure yet whether you can stop the doc and the other guy before they squawk to the Monty's. If you can't, we may need Preston as a hostage. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean. All right, Lebo, let's tie up this red coat and get going. All right. We'll use my team to get there. Meanwhile, Dr. McComb had completed his examination of little Gary Carver. What about it, Doctor? It's diphtheria, all right. His throat's in pretty bad shape. Oh, Easy, Phil. steady, Ada. What's the outlook, Doctor? Ordinarily, I'd say it's not too good. But I've got something here in my bag that just came through from the States. A newfangled cure for diphtheria. They call it an antitoxin. It has to be injected into the patient with a needle. Will it make him well again? Frankly, I don't know. I haven't tried it out yet. Go ahead and use it, Doctor. If there's a chance it'll help him, that's all that matters. Very well. I'll give it to him right away. Unnoticed by Dr. McComb and the Carvers, King had turned around and headed back to Sergeant Preston almost immediately after arriving at the Carver cabin. When he got back to the shack in the canyon, his nostrils caught a new scent. The scent of someone who hadn't been there at the shack when he left. King bristled momentarily. Then he began to whine and scratch at the door. Inside the cabin, Sergeant Preston said, Sounds like one of your huskies has broken loose. Yeah, I guess you're right. I better go fix the critter before he starts raising cane with the rest of the dogs. <laughs> I guess you won't get away while my back's turned. Not the way you're tied. Klondike pulled out a parka. Then he grabbed a dog whip and started toward the door. King caught the outlaw's scent even before the door opened. He crouched, ready for action. Klondike staggered back in panic as the great dog sprang. He tried to wield his whip, but King was already on top of him. Klondike dropped the whip and fumbled for the holster under his parka. With a sudden jerk, he pulled the gun free. But before he could squeeze the trigger, King's powerful jaws clamped tight on the wrist of his gun hand. Sorry, King. Pin him down, fella. I still, or you'll get hurt. Sergeant Preston had been handcuffed and his ankles tied together with rope. He struggled to his feet and hopped over to the door. Cautiously, he bent down and picked up Klondike's gun. Now then, Klondike, you have the key to these handcuffs in your pocket. Get it. All right. Hand it to me. Here. That's right. I'm going to unlock these handcuffs, and while I'm doing it, I warn you, lie still, or you're going to hear from King. Sergeant Preston took the key between his teeth. Then he held his hands up to his face and inserted the key in the lock. By twisting his head, he was able to unlock the handcuffs. There. Now to get this rope off my ankles. That does it. All right, King, let him up now, boy. On your feet, Klondike. That, that confounded dog. King doesn't like you any better than you like him, Klondike. Hold out your hands while I handcuff you. After handcuffing the outlaw, Sergeant Preston tied him to the bunk. Then he said, You won't be going anywhere for a while, Klondike, so I'm going to borrow your dog team. Come on, King. We've got to get to the Carver place as fast as possible. Four lives depend on... <laughs> Meanwhile, Phil and Ada Carver and Dr. McComb were grouped around the bedside of the sick boy. He's been sleeping ever since you gave him that antitoxin. Doctor... Tell me honestly, do you think he's got a chance? It's in the hands of God, Mrs. Carver. I've done everything I can. There's nothing else to do now but wait and see how he responds to the treatment. If only he'd just perk up a little bit. It's so awful to see him like that, especially when he's always been so lively. Yes, I know what you mean. It might help a lot if you could find some way of rousing his interest. Phil. Hmm. It sounded like someone at the door. I'll go see who it is, dear. Don't bother, mister. Two men with guns. That's right. We aim to use them. Get your hands up, all of you. And come out here where we can keep our eyes on you. Bondi just told us to take care of the doc and this other guy here. What are we going to do with the dame and the kid? We'll take care of them the same way. And we might as well do it right now. Drop those guns! What? No! Slug turned to fire, but the sergeant's bullet shattered his wrist. King sprang at Lebo. My wrist is busted! Doc, you got to fix it. Oh, 
dog, Bradford. Get him away from me. I had enough of him the first time he jumped. Take that gun away from you, Lebo. I'm doing it. All right, oh, King. You. He's had enough, fella. Get your hands up, Lebo, and keep them there. You and your partners are both under arrest in the name of the Queen. Listen. It's Gary. He's awake. Oh, darling. Oh. Don't be frightened. It's all right. Tell me. What happened? Well, two bad men tried to make trouble, but Sergeant Preston took care of them. How are you feeling, son? Any better? I, I guess so. But still not very peppy, eh? Hmm. Feels like your fever's gone down a bit. Say, uh, you still haven't told me what you'd like me to bring you from town. Got any ideas yet? Uh-uh. Hmm. Wait a minute. I'll bet I know what you'd like. Suppose I get old Injun Tom to make you a special pair of snowshoes just your size. What do you say to that, huh? All right. I guess it's pretty hard to work up much interest in outdoor stuff when you're flat on your back in bed, isn't it, son? If only we could think of something that would interest him right away without waiting until he gets better. At that moment, King advanced into the room and trotted over to the sick boy's bedside. <laughs> Sergeant Preston, watching from the doorway, saw the boy's eyes suddenly light up. Daddy, hmm? I know what I want. You do? You just tell me what it is. I want a dog. What? Just like King. <laughs> oh, <hell. laughs> oh, By dear. golly, son, there's not another dog like King in all the Yukon. But I'll bring you back the swellest little pup you ever laid eyes on. <laughs> and if uh, you ask me... That pup will be all the medicine he'll need from now on. <laughs> well, Gary, maybe Sergeant Preston will let King stay here with you till Daddy gets back to town. I'll be glad to. King. Hey, boy, now listen. <laughs> Your next assignment is helping Gary get well now that this case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure. What an offer, fellas and girls. It's sensational. If you act right away, we'll send you five pocket-sized Bugs Bunny comic books. Not just one, but five. Five different Bugs Bunny comic books for only 15 cents and one box top from a package of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Each book is 32 pages thick, each one a complete story you've never seen nor read before. Only Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice offer you these five Bugs Bunny comic books. And in addition, we'll show you how easy it is to get ten more. Hurry, get your order in the mail right away. Simply send 15 cents, only 15 cents, and one box top from Quaker Puff Wheat or Quaker Puff Rice, the delicious, crisp, nourishing cereals shot from guns. Send with your name and address to Bugs Bunny, Chicago 77, Illinois. I'll repeat that address, so listen carefully. It's Bugs Bunny, Chicago 77, Illinois. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case... Hazel Crest's decision. The constable at Indian Creek needed our help. When King and I passed to Selkirk on our way there, I was surprised to have the notorious Hazel Crest ask to come along. The result of this meeting with Hazel brought about a very startling and extremely dangerous climax. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. The breakfast cereals shot from guns. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puff Wheat 